Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us back here at Jericho Energy's channel. We're, of course, sitting here once again with CEO Brian, and today we want to dive into some recent industry updates in the hydrogen world. But first off, Brian, how are you doing today? Doing great, Michael. Good, good. Very glad to hear it. So we had previously discussed hydrogen potentially playing a role in, in kind of in tandem with EVs. And I thought what was interesting while reading about hydrogen, Japan actually has a little bit of a head start on this, where they have roughly 4,000 hydrogen-based vehicles on the road. Now, these are silent vehicles, a lot like EVs, very low emissions. And uh, th th that's like 10% of their goal, and they plan on getting it higher. What do you think this says about the, the awareness of hydrogen's growth in the world? I think you're starting to see how hydrogen plays in the mobility market, right? So when you think about its utility, batteries own the, the, the car market, the, the small truck market, but as you get into longer distance driving, need for storage, capacity to move things, you're, you're playing right into hydrogen's value point as it relates to mobility. And mm -hmm. Japan is starting to see that the challenge that you see is getting enough hydrogen filling stations in place that allows them to travel even greater distances, right? So hydrogen has a much, much bigger range than you see in EVs, but it also still needs a filling station along the way to accomplish what we use all of our long haul equipment for. Um, you know, and so, at, you know, with whether it's at the passenger vehicle and the Mirai, um, you're seeing the, the, the Jap Japan and a lot of the Japanese manufacturers really pushing forward um, with no turning back on the utilization of hydrogen as a fuel for, for a lot of their mobility solutions. Yes, yes, agreed. It's definitely uh, infrastructure being the bottleneck here. And this is, it, it's not even just with hydrogen. EVs were facing the same issue. And now yeah, after 10, 10, 15 years, we're finally starting to see that get solved, right? So it's just a matter of demand and, and like technological growth kind of standing in the way. But as you said, the awareness is growing even all across the world. Has there been any, any other things mentioned like relating to hydrogen across the world you've kept your eye on? So there's a lot of things going on and hydrogen seems to be capturing a lot of the news, a lot of the markets, and a lot of the mind share. And a lot of that has to do with COP, right? So if you look at what's happening at COP right now, you have hydrogen on the daily roster, but next week coming up is the biggest events for hydrogen where you're really gonna see it take center stage a lot of exciting things in the process there are a lot of countries moving to utilizing hydrogen but you got to remember hydrogen is a medium for transporting energy right mm -hmm. it stores it it holds it it time shifts it it delivers it it's not actually energy in of itself but it is what we have in, in our world it provides us the best alternative to moving all of our renewables to always available energy Mm -hmm. Right, which is what the goal is to take the renewable marketplace and make that available when we need it, where we need it, how we need it. You're going to see some of those things next week at COP. You're going to see more announcements. You're going to see more things going on in the space. And I think it's fascinating to see from a global perspective, everybody jumping on board, right? So you have the regulatory, you have the, the corporate and the investor community all pushing for this energy transformation and all seeing hydrogen as playing a more and more important role in this transition. So we're excited to be a part of it. We're excited every day that we see more and more people jumping in and sort of realizing that, you know, hydrogen is going to be here to stay. Yeah, agreed. You know, th there's been some constructive criticism, though, as people are wondering, is, is hydrogen going to solve all these problems or is it just kind of a wild pipe dream? And I think, I think obviously it would be too optimistic to say hydrogen is going to solve all the world's energy problems, right? But I think it plays a very important role. Can you elaborate on it a little more? Yeah, I think, I think to think that there's a one uh, a silver bullet for anything, you know, it, it, is naive. I think that there's going to be a blend. In my mind, the world still uses 100 million barrels of oil. And in my mind, that's not going to change overnight. So it's called an energy transition because we're going to go from a fossil fuel-based energy, um, energy, energy world to one that is a mix, to one that is almost all renewables. This isn't going to happen in a day, a week, a month, or a year, but we have to start. And I don't think that the, the use of hydrogen is all things to everybody, but it has very particular, a very particular fit. It fits really well with what we use natural gas for as it evolves, right? So if you could see a world where hydrogen is the replacement fuel for natural gas, albeit it is not a direct energy source like natural gas, but it does offer us the chance to take direct energy sources 
store it, transport it, move it, and make it available where and when we need it. And you're seeing different solutions. And I think hydrogen will be a part of many, in many forms and fashions. You're seeing hydrogen convert to green ammonia. You're seeing hydrogen from blue hydrogen coming from that, that hydrocarbon molecule. You're seeing green hydrogen. You're seeing turquoise hydrogen. You're going to see a lot of different forms and fashions. You know, just like the EVs, it's not all green. I mean, EVs have no emissions, but their energy source is 80% hydrocarbons. Yeah. Hydrogen is not going to be all green to start either. It'll transition just like everything else, slowly and steadily when it's safe, available, and consumable. And I think you're going to see the commercial industrial markets adopted first, and eventually it'll make it into the homes. But if you keep reading the regs and how things are evolving, companies are pushed every day to think about their carbon footprint, to think about how they can move in a direction that is cleaner. And in every one of those solutions, you're going to consider hydrogen. Not going to be a fit for every one of them, but it's going to be considered in every solution. And that's really why I think you're going to see it dominate and be a big part of the future because it is an option. It may not be the best option and it may not be the most cost-effective option in each case, but it is an option and it's going to be considered in each and every use case as we transition. Yeah, that's very well said. And when you brought up the silver bullet, I think a lot of people will just inherently are looking for that without thinking about just the next couple steps we can take ahead to get forward in this. And as you said, technologically, it'll keep improving, right? Let's say it might start off, not start off totally green. EVs aren't even totally green, but that's what we're aiming for. And it's one of the paths or the verticals that facilitate us towards a greener future. Agreed. Agreed. And I think, you you know, it takes time. I mean, you're, gonna, you're starting to see it. I mean, you know, you have more and more EVs every day. You have more and more folks believing in that tech. Um, and for a passenger vehicle market, it's a great fit, right? And the batteries are getting better and you're seeing more, more adoption. The cars are getting better, getting better looking. Um, and so you're seeing all the things you need for people to move into that space. And the cars are getting cheaper. Um, I think you'll see hydrogen more and more as we move into the truck world. And I think eventually you'll see a blend and a bridging of the two in a lot of sort of mid-sized vehicles. Awesome. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I think we will see a bigger blend of the two into the future. But guys, tell us what you think. Do you see hydrogen going big into the passenger market or the truck market? Let us know. Let us know if you've ever seen a hydrogen vehicle on the road. We'll happily answer any questions you guys got as well. But for now, thank you for watching and stay tuned for another video soon. Ryan, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me.